Bar Stool Sports. Bar Titan. Brandon Walker. Mostly Sports. Whoa, 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 whoa. Welcome to Mostly Sports, presented by Jägermeister. Burr, 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 burr. It is Monday, March 11th. We are live from Chicago, and I'm going to talk to you in a second, Brandon, but before I do, I want to talk about Jägermeister. Okay, guys, let's talk about a presenting sponsor, Jägermeister. They could have written a totally normal ad here, like a really classic ad. They could have talked about their history and the 56 botanicals. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of botanicals. So many botanicals. It could have been all salesy and cutesy, but they know you don't care. Jägermeister doesn't want to be like all those other brands that buy ads on our show. Their words, not ours. They just wanted to say two things. Jägermeister is great, but everyone has been drinking it wrong. How should we be drinking it? They're glad you asked. Ice cold at zero degrees Fahrenheit to be exact. Ice cold shots of Jägermeister. That's it. That's all they want to tell you. So when, wherever you are out, if you're hanging with friends or at the bar... Or maybe you're doing all the sports stuff or just mostly sports stuff. Call the shots. Cheers with frosty zero-degree Fahrenheit shots of Jägermeister. Damn, that's cold. Ice cold. And remember to check Jägermeister out at Jägermeister.com. Drink responsibly. Jägermeister liqueur. Liqueur? Mm-hmm. 35% alcohol by volume. What's cooler than being cool? By Mass Jägermeister U.S. White Plains, New York. We have a presenting sponsor. We sure do. We made it. We did. Look at us. We made it. How Look at us. That? Shout out Jägermeister. Shout out Jägermeister. Welcome aboard. Um, All right. Good slow clap for Jägermeister. Yeah. Uh, what do you want to talk about, Brandon? Oh, we still got to do a show. Yeah. I, thought, I thought that was it. I thought we were just going <laughs> to pat ourselves on the back for the whole show and just say we did it. Mark, I don't know if you've been noticing, but it's March. And it's time to talk college basketball. <laughs> it's, everywhere you look is college basketball, this college basketball, that. And we got to catch people up because college basketball is the thing. And we're about to talk about it right now. My number one question when I watched college basketball this weekend, why does – how does Duke keep finding them? <laughs> do, they, do they turn them into this shit when they get them? Why does this keep happening with good Duke White players? Why does this happen? I think I think Filipowski is proof that they – well, I guess I, I don't – Filipowski know. last year seemed like a cool dude, like he was out there to play basketball, everything's yeah. good. And then we started to see signs of it this year, signs of that Duke White boy syndrome. And then uh, we had, of course, this court storming where he acted like he had been in, in World War Three and got drug off the court. And that's when you said, okay, well, no, now wait a minute. Wait a minute. He could be – he could be one of the Dukies, and Saturday night. I think they teach it to him. Do they? I think I think Filipowski is proof they teach it to him because I never, I never really had a problem with Filipowski. In fact, he was a guy I would point to to say, "Calm down, everybody. Don't just hate him because he's a white player at Duke. Yeah. Because if we do that, we have no credibility. Uh, those of us who are Duke haters, mm -hmm. you have no credibility if you just hate every white guy that puts on a Duke uniform. They have to earn the hatred." Um, and then, I don't. In the last month, he's gone from zero to sixty so fast, so fast, so fast. So and and it's not just the actions; it's also like the uh, you saw his quote after the game where he's like, "My foot slipped." I, I no. He I, said, my, "He said his foot slipped, Brandon." I okay. So Saturday, he said he tripped the guy and his foot slipped. Saturday his foot night, slipped up. he's laying on the ground. How's his, his foot, foot slipped sli up? <laughs> How did your foot slip up? So <laughs> keep going. I'll, <laughs> I'll see how high you can get. It's slipped up. <laughs> so he's laying on the ground. And uh, it wasn't um, Baycott. It was the other big guy. Harrison right? Ingram. It was Harrison Ingram. It was Harrison Ingram, Ingram yeah. So Harrison Ingram is, is running past him. Harrison Ingram, and this is Duke fans are like, oh, he pushed him. Harrison Ingram like light, lightly grazes him. And Kyle Filipowski puts his foot up, trips Harrison Ingram, and then not only trips him, not only does that, when he gets up, he acts like his legs are defective. Yeah. Like, oh, fuck, I can't walk. That was my same knee slash ankle. I can't remember which I, which story I went with. Uh, it was the <laughs> same knee slash ankle that, that got just pulverized in the court storm. I stepped on a landmine yeah. a couple of weeks yeah. ago at Wake Forest. Um, I don't know. I Why does Duke and, – and here's a bigger question. They're not going to do this to Cooper Flag, are they? 
Yeah, they are. They absolutely are. They're going to ruin Cooper they're, Flag. I think Cooper. Well, if you watch most Cooper exciting Flag, recruiting years, they're going to ruin. Cooper Flag it. has. It's not a. Cooper Flag has already there. Uh, he's not. He's not hateable yet, but like you see the vision. You see the vision because he's. He's he's he toes the line between cocky and confident, and uh, what you have to do if you're going to be good at basketball, you have to believe in your abilities and all that. Um, if Cooper Flag had committed to to UConn, which was the I think his other it was, yeah. it was down to Duke and UConn, um, I don't think I would be saying that he's he's got potential to be very hateable, but you you you, you see the signs. He's he's a, he's a promising young prospect that uh, everybody will hate by the time. But there's he leaves Duke. there's cocky and confident. Which I don't think any, any of those ever bother me. When it, cocky and confident becomes dirty and just being an asshole, that's that's yeah. when the Duke white boy package comes out. But I think they'll teach him that. That's what I mean. I think he's got the tools, and they will get him in there and teach him how it works. That was so satisfying. As 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 annoyed as we all are, and as much as we um, are like, damn, Kyle Fopowski fucking sucks. Yeah. Uh, it feels good, doesn't it? It feels good to be back with Duke. It feels good to a little like, bit, yeah. It feels good to have the crazies yeah. throwing shit at the Carolina players and they're waving at him. Yeah. You got guys throwing up L's at the uh crazies. It's so good. Yeah, no, it, it's nice to see Duke embrace being a little hated again. And and it's nice to see him lose. I sent you guys the video of uh Jared McCain singing at the uh, pep rally the night before too. The um, senior night. Uh the uh the they they did like the pep rat like a uh, I don't know what else you would call it but all the Cameron crazies are in there and he's singing that I don't even know what that song is it's like a TikTok song yeah Jerry yeah. McCain does a bunch of TikToks and paints his nails and whatever and that pisses some people off I don't yeah. I don't ever see it so I don't really care but uh he apparently has like built some brand where he sings some fucking song yeah and he was singing it to the crazies the night before the Carolina game and uh holy shit. Holy shit! This this brought it back for me before the game even started. I'm not even that mad at Jared McCain, although this is like horrendous. Um, it's the pan to the uh, crazies. Look at these fucking dorks. Wait for it. Wait for it. Look at all these dorks. Oh, fuck them. <laughs> Look at all these dorks, dude. I, it's, I don't know. There are just, they're just times you, you Wait, hate. By the, way, by the way, were there – maybe you go back to the pan again. Were there 90% of the people in there wearing, like, sweatshirts and everything, Duke basketball, and there were two girls that were just going to the club right after this? Yeah. <laughs> right, in the, right in the middle? Hold on. Everybody's yeah, – and her and bang. Maybe not. Maybe they're just – No, just they, uh, yeah. they're Duke kids. They're not going yeah. to the club. They're okay. fucking – they, they, I don't know. There's sometimes you like you hate Duke and you think to yourself, "Am, am I just jealous?" I think that's what they try to say is that you're just jealous, right? Um, at, at this point, there's not a whole lot to be jealous about. No, it's not. Be je jealous, be you, jealous of you, UConn. You, you watch stuff like that, and then you're like, "No, no, 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 no." Yeah. It's it's not a me problem. It's a them problem. And uh, I, I was worried when Kay left that we weren't going to have that because Kay was. Do, do you remember the press conference he did? Like when he they they said which he was, one, buddy? When they said he was going to uh um. You gotta find. We might have to find that. We, we might just do this all day. <laughs> the The press conference when Kay said he was going to retire, and he comes out. It was this was like before the farewell tour, and he comes out and he claps like a crab person. Yeah, he claps like this, <laughs> and he's like clapping like this, and they're playing that fucking uh, the Cascada song. Is that what it's called? The what's the every time we touch? Every time we touch. Yeah, they're playing every time we touch, and you have ninety five year old Coach K <laughs> clapping like a crab person at a press conference where everyone's like clapping along with him. And uh, I'm just pointing out that, like, the cold is back. The cold of Duke is back. They're very yeah. hateable. Kyle Filipowski's a villain, and it felt so good watching Carolina kick their ass. Now. It felt so good. I have an observation about college basketball, and this if I'm wrong, you tell me I'm wrong. I think we could be in a golden age of cold-ass white boys. If you watch college basketball over the weekend you just what saw cold ass white boy after cold ass white boy what are you doing um cormac ryan what are you doing apparently came from notre dame he, i'm trying to do a segment here if you just leave me alone for a second cormac ryan scored 30 31 uh where did that come from dalton connect is amazing the, just cold ass white boys all over the country mark i hate you i hate <laughs> you sometimes you don't want to talk college basketball we got an NFL. Um, we got plenty of free agency news and stuff like Did that. Did you watch that Tennessee Kentucky game? 
Uh, I watched the because it was going on. I was, I had a difficult relationship with college basketball at that very point in time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I had a um. I just don't know why I care so much. That's Can, all. Uh, I I wrote this down. I wanted to get to it eventually, but it seems like we're here now. Um, what's the relationship like with Big Game Boomer? Big Game Boomer named you number one college football personality of 2023, yeah. and then also named your school number two team that should definitely not be in the NCAA tournament. Well, that's the beauty about me and Big Game Boomer. I I don't have to agree with him all the time. He doesn't have to agree with me. It's a respect factor. Um, he put it out there, and plus he's – He's kind of right. We have <laughs> – we've driven – we were comfortably in, and we had that terrible loss to Kentucky last – not a terrible loss, but a heartbreaking loss to Kentucky last week, and we yep. haven't won since, and we're going straight to the bubble. Ohio State's going straight to the bubble. We're just Hell going yeah. in different directions. Oh yeah. We'll meet you there. Meet me at the bubble. <laughs> I don't want to be at the bubble. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Brandon, why don't you meet me at the bubble on no, Sunday? No, I'm good. I'll I'm meet good. you at the bubble on Sunday. So you're, you're feeling uh, two, two wins gets you in, you think? I think two wins gets us in. Three, three removes all doubt. Does I think it, two should get us in. I think what happened with Ohio State is that everybody, um, everybody just made up their mind, which which is fair. Like I, I I don't blame you. I think, but when we fired Chris Holman, you were like, all right, so we're done with Ohio State. Let's throw them in the garbage. And it's a natural re- th- thought. It's a process. natural thought yeah. process. But uh, it's my job as a a guy with a microphone in front of me and as the lead propagandist of Ohio State basketball to remind everybody that we're fucking back, dude. Yeah, we're fucking back, and. Uh, I don't know. I need, I need all these bracketologists to pull their heads out of their ass and notice it because they they said they were done with the Buckeyes, but the metrics say otherwise. Well, let me. We're right there. Let me ask you this: Don't you are you worried that you're going to lose the excitement of a coaching search? Or you're going to have to hire this guy as as as. No, I like Jake. I would be. Okay. I would be fine. You'd be with fine that. with that. Yeah. Um, nothing. Nothing gets the, the juices flowing like a good coaching search. I don't really want him to get hired because I think uh, that's a bad spot to start your career in. Mm-hmm. Like the second. Like that's just too high pressure. There's too much going on, and there's too much. Yeah, it's too much. That's too big of a problem. The leash might be too tight on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if he if he goes to the NIT next year, all of a sudden they're they're thinking. Yeah, oh. then everyone's like, we made a huge mistake. Fire this. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's just too much. I would rather him. I, I like him so much that I don't want to give him that much right out of the gate. But uh, Kentucky Tennessee was so good, so far. Well, Kentucky's going to the Final Four. Yeah, you might be right. Kentucky's going to the Final Four. So all That'd that right. shit in the early season, Kentucky. Now the players have realized they're in March and they're really good, and they don't need that stinking ass coach. They're they're just gonna uh, they're, stinking they're ass just, coach. They're just gonna take over, and the players are so good. I think a lot of coaches are have stinking asses. <laughs> I, I don't think that's fair. I mean, to you see don't about know John you don't know that. I don't think he's the only. What percentage coach of coaches ass? do you think have stinking asses? I I would say it's a very high percentage. I, who who's the most likely to not have a stinking ass? Tony Bennett probably. He's so handsome. He's, he's probably Rick Pitino's ass does not stink. Tony Bennett's Rick ass. Rick Pitino's ass like absolutely has. Rick Pitino's ass hasn't stunk since like 1986. <laughs> 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 he was on PMT, by the way. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he came in here uh, and did the interview and shook my hand. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, it was an awkward. I think I think me PFT and Dan standing around Rick Pitino. There was a moment where we're all like the three of us are just giving each other side eye because we're all like, we are. I don't even think it's one, two, three. I think it's one A, one B, and one C. The three guys who have made more jokes about Rick Pitino than anyone else in the world. Really. I stuck my hand out to shake it, and he gave me his coat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> is, that, is that true? <laughs> um, I have circa two thousand two. I was dating a girl. Mm. It's yeah. big time for you, man. Dating a girl in 2002 uh, big, uh, who's, uh, who was loosely related to the Louisville basketball program when Patino was there. And we went down to Hattiesburg and watched Louisville play Southern Miss. And I have a picture of myself with Rick Patino when I was 23 years old. Bad haircut, skinny, awful. It's one of my worst pictures, and I'm trying to find it to, mm. to show you guys how – how terrible I looked, but I did. I made. I, I drove four hours just to go get a picture of Rick Patino. Rick Patino. I was a huge Rick Patino fan back in the day. I still am. He might be a phenomenal coach. Pound for pound, I like using that phrase. I don't even really know what it means. It pound for pound, the definitely best. doesn't work in coaching, right? Because they're all doesn't right. matter how much they weigh at all. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't even know what it means in boxing, really. Pound for pound, like when they say pound for pound, I think it means. I think it means pound for pound, like how many times you pound your opponent. Mm. Cause like, why don't you just say he's the best boxer? I don't. I never understood like, pound. Connor, any any thoughts on this? 
I guess the point is if you have like a five six boxer versus well, that's height. A, that's height. That's okay, not, five not six one fifty. Okay, versus somebody who's six foot two hundred. If the five six guy who weighs one hundred fifty pounds was the same measurements as the six foot guy, he, actually, he would dominate him. Is he actually explaining this? <laughs> you ask my opinion. That's what I think. <laughs> well, but but why? But why not just say he's a better boxer? That's a great point. I don't why know. Do we need to say. I, I don't understand the phrase either. No, I, I just like using it though. I like using it, especially in context of it makes no sense. Such as comparing college basketball coaches. I just realized something. You ask Connor to explain anything, he's going to explain. Yeah. It, whether he gets it or not. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna take a shot. <laughs> that was a pretty That's good explanation. Job. Thank you. Just trying. Uh, Rick Pitino for me, pound for pound, <laughs> might be the best college basketball coach of all time. Might be the best basketball coach of all time. Pound for pound, just pound for pound. No, you're you're thinking about it as not pound for pound. I need you. Just, I need you in a pound for pound mindset. Hold on, hold on. You're hold on. in an overall mindset. Hold on. Pound for pound. Lock in on the pound for pound. Does Go pound ahead. for pound give an inherent advantage to smaller guys? Because I don't think you've ever said the heavyweight champion of the world was pound for pound no, the best if, fighter in the world. They used to say that about like Isaiah Thomas, like right? Pound for pound. They never the said about. They never said pound for pound. Shaquille O'Neal is the best player right. in basketball, even though he was. Yeah, and I th I think it's a backhanded compliment. I think if anyone says you're pound for pound something, they're saying you're, you're a little bitch. Not. Yeah, because if the if you actually were the best, they would just say you're the best. I think you're right. It, they you just say you're the best. Yeah, if they if, say if pound for pound, you're the best. What I'm actually saying is. <sighs> If you feel like Floyd Mayweather is the best boxer say he's the best who's boxer. ever lived, just say Floyd Mayweather is the greatest boxer who ever lived. You don't have to say pound for pound, I think he's better than Tyson or whoever. Just say Floyd Mayweather is the best boxer that ever lived. But if you say he's pound for pound, what you're saying is like, I don't truly believe this, but I'm trying to like throw him into the conversation. Anyway, where were we? Uh, Kentucky-Tennessee game was electric. Uh, fucking Reed Shepard and Dalton Connect mm -hmm. going back and forth. Two cool ass realize. white boys. It was it was so so good and my my complaint is well I don't need to do that I don't need to bring hate and ass energy to this conversation. Do you realize Reed Shepard is currently projected to be a top five pick? Yeah, <laughs> I thought he I thought he, no 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 I seriously thought he was he he looked like a good college player who would like be a star next year and would be like a mid round pick. He's he he's like got top five pick. In he's been like lottery. He's been first round like all year. Really. Yeah. They have two top Welcome five to picks on the bench. Dillingham, I know. Dillingham should be the number one pick in the draft. I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. If, well, it's it's interesting because this draft sucks. So yeah, this is a bad. There, it's it's hard to tell like how good guys actually are in terms of you know like if this was a different draft, would we be this excited about some of these guys? Um, but yeah, Reed Shepard's been balling out from the start of the season, and he was. It was a really fun conversation in December because he's coming off the bench and he. He's their best player, and some mock guys have him like top ten. Other guys are like, he's definitely not even going to enter the draft. Yeah. I think people have come around and they realize he's good. He's 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 gone. He's going to leave. Um, but yeah, what a basketball game that was. That was incredible. Dalton Connect had forty and they lost, but Kentucky's going to the Final Four. You think? I think so. I think Tennessee's going to the Final Four too. It could be. Who's your Final Four teams? Give me your Final Four teams without looking at the bracket. I had it written down last week, um, but. Uh, Kentucky's going to the Final Four. Right. Tennessee's going to the Final of Four. Yukon's going to the Final Four. Okay. Um, I think North Carolina's going to the Final Four. No argument so far. Houston's going to the Final Four. Okay. Um, I think Arizona's going to the Final Four. Purdue? Uh, Purdue's going to the Final Four, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I think – now, then you, you – There's you, always one surprise. Um, Like Creighton? Creighton's going to the Creighton, Final Four. Yeah. Yeah. I had it written down last week, but I had my whole Final Four, but I guess I don't have it no more. There's not always one surprise, though. I, I just said that matter-of-factly, but it's not always. I feel like more often than not there is, though. Yeah. But not always. It's true. Sometimes Not in 2008. Yeah. Although, you could argue that... That getting, was the surprise. That was a surprise. Getting four number one seeds was a surprise. So, there is always a surprise. We, yeah, we did. We, I, I went home and I thought about that. We said that. I said that on the show the other day that uh, I thought about it, and I was like, yeah, man, a chalk bracket. Mm-hmm. The event is called March Madness. Yep. So if you if you are predicting there's no upsets at all, zero upsets, that's as that's as crazy as it gets. <laughs> so you're not even just the final. Are you board, arguing a just, chalk bracket would actually just be picking all upsets? No, I'm arguing that the event we all go into the event knowing it's March Madness. We yeah. know that chaos is coming. Oh, so and if you, you predict you, no if, chaos, and, and you and someone comes to you and is like, "What do you predict?" and I say, "I predict there will be zero chaos." 
That's as that's as insane of a prediction as possible. This guy's fucking crazy. And yet, if you if you pick zero brack or zero upsets, you pick of the 68, 67 games, you pick sixty seven favorites to win. Um, everyone's gonna just roll their eyes and be like, "That's way to go out on a limb." Yeah. That's the that's the biggest limb you could go out on. The event's called March Madness, Brandon. It is. And you're predicting that it's March saneness. Why March? <laughs> March normalcy. March normalcy. March. March normalcy just doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Um. I'm gonna read an ad because we got five of them. Oh, oh shit! This show. This show. Dollar dollar bills, y'all. This you want, show. You want to hear something crazy? Yeah. There's a show this week. We have six ads. Six. Six. <laughs> Bringing an ad off the bench. Yeah. <laughs> six is good. Cars.com is a leading digital marketplace that connects car shoppers with their perfect car. Celebrating 25 years of helping shoppers research, find inventory, finance, and sell cars. Wherever life takes you next, whoever you're looking to be, there's a car for that on Cars.com. They got up to 50,000 cars added daily to Cars.com. You can shop over 2 million cars for 2 million possibilities. Find your next possibility on Cars.com. Where to next? All right. I have, I have a statement to make. Okay. <clears throat> Yesterday, in the LSU South Carolina <laughs> women's basketball Southeastern Conference Championship game, there was a fracas, a Donnie Brook, a rift, a brouhaha, brouhaha, if you will. Thank you very much. There was a fight, and multiple players got ejected. Multiple players got in trouble. Multiple players um, got in the mix. After the game, I came to one realization. It's a realization I've come to almost every single time I've ever watched LSU women's basketball play over the last few years. Do you know what that realization was? I think I do, but Kim I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Yeah. Kim Mulkey's the worst. She sucks so She bad. is the worst, man. I hate She's her. She's the fucking worst. I hate her. <laughs> of all the look-at-me coaches, of all the asshole coaches in this world, Kim Mulkey, god damn it, man. There's, I don't get... Old man yells at clouds when it comes to sports fights. Sports fights happen, okay? These players are, are like on the edge of the they're, they're competitive. They're on the edge of fighting at all times. Sometimes, occasionally, rarely, it gets out of hand. It got out of hand. That's when you need adults to say the right thing after the game like Dawn Staley did. Dawn Staley is like, I'm kind of embarrassed for basketball right now. I'm embarrassed for our team. This is not who we're what we're about. This is not who we are. And Kim Mulkey started out trying to do that, and she's like, Ah, you know, you can't just can't do that. I, I tell you what, you you can't go out there and you can't fight. But I'll tell you another motherfucking thing. I wish she <laughs> I wish she'd have pushed Angel Reese. That's what I wish she'd have done. Hey, what the impression. fuck? That was a pretty good impression. Thanks. Thanks. Do, can you do you have that clip of uh of, of Mulkey at the press conference? I probably could have told you beforehand. But every time LSU's in like a situation like this, Kim Mulkey is making an ass of herself. She sucks. She's she's never been good. <laughs> she's never she has zero W's in my eyes. She's never like I've never heard her say anything where I'm like, I fucking hate Kim Mulkey, but she's got a great point. Good point. Yeah. Great point, good Kim. Point. <laughs> she's Ofer in my eyes. She's never once done anything. Never once. Go ahead. No one wants to be a part of that. Uh huh. Good. No one wants to see to, to see that ugliness. Good statement. That's me but with Kim I can Mulkey. Tell you this. <laughs> I wish she would have pushed Angel Reese. What? <laughs> don't push a kid. That you six eight. Don't push somebody that little. Look at her fucking coat. Uh, that was uncalled for. You can't opinion. make a serious. It press sounds like it sounds like Kim Mulkey's doing the pound for pound thing. <laughs> You're six eight. Don't push a. All right. Here, here's the thing, Mark. Uh, I am, I'm embarrassed at my behavior. We. I can never be involved in something like that. No one should ever be involved in something like that. It is. Is a blight to my family, and it's embarrassing, and I apologize for it. But yeah. I tell you one motherfucking thing: I wish a motherfucker Fuck would. Yeah, I wish a motherfucker would. She sucks. <laughs> she sucks so bad. Connor, what do you think? Connor. Oh damn. Connor. Damn. All right. Where? Never mind. What? We we just we just getting up during the show now. No, I'm sorry. I really, really, really had to sneeze, and my nose was running like crazy, and I wanted to do it off camera and I wouldn't interrupt the show but then I just wound up interrupting the show anyway I guess so mm -hmm. I apologize I'm just going to say right now that if you uh, agree with this 
Sneezing's fine in here. We can sneeze. No, 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 but I was like oh, sniffling oh, and everything. I wanted to go outside sneeze? and blow my nose and. Oh, if you need actually... to blow your nose. Also, yeah. you would have you would have stopped the show had he sneezed. Yeah. yeah. So I, I I found the. I... You got to eat the sneeze. We were running the what clip. About just, just eating the sneeze. No, but I was sniffling. Yeah. Heavy. And he knew that you were in the middle of a clip. I was like, okay, we got a clip running. Yeah. I'll go outside, take care of that right now. I'll come back in. If he sneezed, they would this same conversation would have had. This conversation was destined to happen regardless. Same thing with Ebo guess, on the yeah. phone. If Ebo left the room to take a phone call, it would have been the same thing that happened had he took the phone right. call in the in the room. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just don't do any of that. Don't do anything. Just don't do anything. Don't don't do anything. Don't move. Don't say anything. Don't, <laughs> don't do anything. If you're thinking about doing something, don't. Do we have to like raise our hand and get like a hall pass or something? Yeah. You didn't raise we your hand. We should have hall question. passes. We should have hall passes on the show. <laughs> And Connor's like, "Can I go to the bathroom?" You hit him with a sassy mayu. Huh. Do I look like Do I look like I'm dressed like JJ Watt? Yeah. <laughs> um, Kimoki sucks. She does. Hold well, on. Uh, Hall passes were just bullshit. I gotta fucking pee, or I gotta shit, and I gotta ask you for a pass. I gotta, I gotta walk. What? What kind of? It's not. These are not military installations. Did you have? I, I agree with you. That's, did you have a student out there who was watching to make sure everybody had a pass? No, we nobody did. We just believed in the pass system. We, we we blindly believed in it. They weren't checking. They weren't checking for passes. We had like eight security guards in my school that would like audit. There's a guy that would go around the, the uh, parking lot in a golf cart and make sure you didn't leave school early. Yeah. Really? Yeah. My senior year, I would go to Wendy's for lunch most days of the I, week. If I could have, I would have. Times have changed. We were allowed to do that. We were allowed to leave during lunch, but if you came back late, they locked the doors. I think in, uh, in D.C. you used to be able to go actually out and do this, and then the D.C. sniper – kind of put it into mm. being able to leave school yeah that was a bad it. time yeah getting shot will do it the uh i saw someone make the point and it's like stuck with me all these years mm -hmm. um the american education system that uh you go from within like four months mm -hmm. you go from having to raise your hand to go piss mm -hmm. and getting a hall pass to you're now sitting you're now in college, and you have to declare <laughs> what 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 you want to do with the rest of your life. Yeah, like declare your major and put yourself on a track for what you want to yeah. do <laughs> for the rest of your life. <laughs> That's a very what do you, <laughs> college ju does <laughs> just the the the, the, the three hundred no the hundred eighty degree turn it takes from high school and and what you're used to doing. Yeah, now you got to find your own, you got to find a different building. Yeah, I yeah. Don't know. Yeah. Uh, high schools, everything's right there. You show up at college and they go, "What do you want to major in?" You're like, "I don't really know." And they're like, "We well, better figure it the fuck out." <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, whatever you major in, you're, yeah. you're, you're going to do this for the rest of your life. Good luck. <laughs> you're like, "Yeah, I three months ago I had to take a shit in class. I'd have to fill out paperwork." To, but then, to then college it. will fuck with your mind too, because college will say, "Listen, guys, I don't know. I don't care if you're here at class or not. You don't have to be at class. You whatever. You pass the test. Whatever. You can go three months without going to a class and then show up. But then yeah. some classes would be like, you better be here every you fucking time. Better be time. here every day. Yeah, yeah. And if you're if you walk through that door after eight o'clock, the door is locked. Yeah. Damn, dude. I don't know college. I love college, man. <laughs> Tim Mulkey sucks, man. She uh, she sucks so bad, and you know we we had a we had a little stretch there where we were ripping on Caitlin Clark a little bit, just poking fun, having yeah. a little fun. Um, Kim Mulkey yesterday reminded me that uh, she is the singular villain in college basketball. She's yeah. it. She's the only one. She will. She will. Only, yeah. I, I I I fucking hate her. I hate her so much. She's she's everything wrong with college sports. I, I hate. I I legitimately. <laughs> she's not, the, and the more I the more I think about it, the more I'm like I I despise that woman and yeah. I, I will pray on her downfall and I will celebrate every loss she has and uh and I as I said before I don't care that they won the national championship last year it does nothing for it because like LSU fans are like well she wins like, like it validates something yeah. that like that that changes the terrible person that she is because she because she won um no she sucks she sucks so much she sucks so much <laughs> so God, much. I, <laughs> this could be the rest of the show <laughs> Just staring in, into the abyss, just going, God damn, she sucks. I hate her. Um, do y'all want to do LeBron Riz or NFL shit? I had one more women's one more? thing. Okay, go uh, ahead. Caitlin Clark won the uh, the Big Ten tournament, or, yeah. or Iowa won the Big Ten tournament, but we know how um, we know how that works. I, I do love that uh, people are trying to <laughs> – Seth Davis, I saw, did this uh, uh, during halftime of the uh, Indiana-Michigan State game on CBS. They were talking about the Iowa women. 
and he tried to shout out all the teammates mm-hmm. that Caitlin Clark had. Guess how many teammates he named? None. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> I can't name I one. Do, I do love that. But people try to do that, and they're yeah. like, you know, Caitlin Clark gets all the headlines. I just want to point out she did not start hot in this game at all. She had four points at halftime. And her teammates, we got to shout out her teammates. Her teammates, this is not just a one-man team or one-woman team. Yeah. This is a whole – this is a great team coached by a great woman. Uh-huh. Uh, I know none of them. I know none of their well, names. Well, <laughs> this team would be nowhere without the efforts of um, uh, curly, uh, ha- curly hair. And that one girl. Um, The short one. The, and the other one. The tall one. Yeah, and the girl that's got, like, the, the long hair with the ponytail. Uh-huh. That, like – her an absolute beast she fucking is she's such a great great basketball player um caitlin clark knows her teammates <laughs> hey curly hair hey you, hey you. <laughs> uh but iowa wins caitlin clark ebo this is i'm, I'm gonna fold you in on this because this, this is an ebo take that i i agree with um caitlin clark they, they win caitlin clark gets the trophy and she does the kobe picture in the bathroom mm-hmm. um and ebo had a great point that i i will let you make it because uh it was you, you were the one that first said it in the group chat. Evo, go, Evo, go ahead. Well, I just want to go on the record that this is not a Caitlin Clark hate thing. I am over. Write that down, Connor. Put that on the record. I am over the Kobe picture for non major title victories. When Ao DeSumo did it, right? It just you were not you were not Kobe. Yeah. Stop trying to recreate such an iconic moment with trophies that aren't even close to the status of. Yeah. Larry O'Brien, you know? Yeah. Like people, I, I completely agree with this. I, I people do it like conference, sh- like conference I com- championship I, is insane. Listen, I completely agree with this. And that might make me a boomer. And you know what? I'll be with the boomers. On if you win something and somebody says, hey, go over here. I want to take your picture no. with the trophy. You yeah. just do it. You just I think every instance in the last, I would say, like six months. <laughs> yeah. Especially. I feel like any instance in the last six months of recreating the Kobe picture I'd, is uh no, shorten that, like two months. I don't know. I feel like it I feel like sometime around October it kinda <laughs> yeah. was played out and anybody who did it after that is just kind of a fucking douchebag. Also if you're it's kind of a if you're doing it in the Midwest, like around That's true this too. Region, That's true too. That's true too. I, I think it just you can't pull it off. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that completely. Yeah. Um, you have anything to add? I don't really know how regionality would play into it. I mean, it seems like if you're in Chicago and you you win a big event, you can do it. What did you win? Hmm? You didn't even win. What? Anything of Are y'all talking importance. about me? <laughs> what did, why are you talking about I, Now I am thinking about it. And what did, what I did, won Yak Basketball. But you didn't though, right? Because they, they, you, you, someone else did. TJ, well, I don't know what he's what what he's doing, but I you stole I, the trophy, I, right? I won. No, I won. I was determined the winner of Yak basketball. By who? By you stealing the trophy? I think TJ actually determined it. You made the first shot. Yeah, you yeah, I made the first shot. Team. But we had two balls, right? I don't know what to tell you. I don't think you did make the first shot. I did. I think review the tape. I'd rather not. I'd. The hut made the first shot, didn't he? The hut wasn't eligible. Eligible, got it, got it. So you were you were second place, and you have we done a second ad? Um, we have done a second ad. We, yeah, have? we have, did yeah. we? Okay, yeah, you did it. We still have three more to go. Um, yeah, I, I I agree with that, Evo. Especially especially that it's not the like if she did this after winning the national championship, it's less weird. But yeah, I thought the same thing with Io Desumu. I agree. It's about reaching the top of the mountain, like that. Kobe was. Like emotional after winning an NBA championship, which is at the top of his his craft, top of the mountain. And there's a sense of there's a sense of relief too, like the job is done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's exhale. Let's let's reflect on the journey we just went on. All of that. And I, the job's not done. Can I throw a concept out there? Just <clears throat> is the original Kobe picture kind of silly? At least it's candid. they brought the trophy to the bathroom, so he but could it's can- look, it, but huh? it's candid. That that one was candid. The rest of them were. You just happened to have the trophy in the bathroom? Yeah, I think he was. You like, don't think that was uh, that was also set up at all? I don't think so, no. Okay, all right. I think he I, I didn't um, had the trophy and was just like in a private moment. I didn't have a man taking video this week, but I wanted to announce this to you boys right now. I got this for us. Oh, nice. I got uh, WCW NWO Revenge for the Nintendo 64 for us. I got it yesterday. Are you all excited? We're going to play yeah. it. Yeah. 
We were going to play it after this show, but uh, I can't make the N64 work. Something went wrong. Hmm. I don't know what's wrong. So, do you, did you play this game? I did not, no. But, uh, Purdue retired Zach Eady's jersey after, uh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's not even. That's lame. That's not even close. <laughs> that's such a what? That's not even close to. I I don't understand why can not why can everybody close. else do it and I can't do it? Because <laughs> because that's not even close. If you if were you doing this ironically, that might get you a pass. Or were you actually very proud to have that trophy in your hands? I don't know what 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 the problem is here. I I Kobe won a trophy. I won a trophy. I, he can't. He's the only one that's allowed to be happy. It would make sense for you if you did it for the dozen, because you know you've been right. knocked off a couple times. Right. You were trying to. You've been through a lot of trials and tribulations with that league, and you finally reached the mountaintop. That would make sense for you. How do we feel about the uh, Wilt thing? Oh yeah, yeah that one's that, 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 that that's cool. worse. That's cool. That's no, that's cool. worse. Well, it, it's cool he scored a hundred, and everybody's holding up just any number now. Yeah, yeah. But like if you score like a thousand, like that's worth it. A thousand, a thousand, a thousand's it, a it, lot. You write a thousand. What's the lowest number you can write on a wilt thing, and make it work? It has to be w- above a hundred now. I think anything over a hundred, yeah. works. I want to see. Uh, I want to see like some. I want to see like a soccer player write like four. <laughs> like <laughs> four holding <laughs> up. Um, he had a hell of a game. He scored four goals. So he's hold up the world thing. Uh, we gotta do. We gotta do LeBron risen up, <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, <laughs> I was gonna do Zach Eady, but go ahead. Oh, go go ahead. Because I had a, I had uh, never mind. We're at forty minutes of college basketball. You can't be upset now. We got forty <laughs> minutes college basketball. You got a full. You got a full. And that's the and there it is. We got a full forty minutes. And there it is. We got a full forty minutes. And there it is. Zach Eady is her. We've established this. Okay. And half the show. Did they really retire his jersey? It doesn't matter. Do uh talk about No, Le- I don't want to talk about LeBron now. LeBron <laughs> whatever else. I'm sorry, I didn't I did yeah, it was it was Sorry. <laughs> uh what else? Uh, Mac Jones. Yeah, this is this is way better. Mac Jones traded this is to the Jaguars. This is better. Uh, because Jaguars. Well, yeah, this is this is whew, uh, whew, no, no. Whew, no. There there this is satisfying. Because yeah. all those fucking dickheads like Dave Portnoy and those Patriots dick bags that acted like yeah. Mac Jones was worth a shit this whole time just immediately had to wake up on Sunday morning and realize they traded him for a yeah. fucking six round pick. Yeah. Well, if you're just going to shut down, are you shutting down? Oh, that w- it would be crazy if someone were to shut down when a topic <laughs> that you're excited about. <laughs> that would be crazy, wouldn't it? All right, Zach Eady. <laughs> Zach Eady. Let's let's go back to the start. Zach Eady, they retired his jersey. I was making Your the thoughts. point. I was tying it all together. Uh, but at this point, yeah, it has been 40 minutes. Um, with Caitlin Clark uh, in the Kobe picture. I I was going to ask you, Brandon, Zach Eady getting his – of course, first of all, it wasn't retired. He just – his number's in the rafters. I don't think they actually retired his number. Maybe okay. they will eventually. Okay. But um, I have a, a philosophy, a theory, whatever you want to call it, that all of this stuff should wait till after the season, that if you hang banners during a season, you're jinxing yourself. Um, do you think it was bad form by Purdue – to do this before the season is over. And they put up the All-American. They, they already declared him a 2024 All-American, which he has not been declared yet. That's interesting. Um, because, like, presumably, presumably, he's going to be in the NBA the next four or five years, right? So getting him back, I don't know. I kind of like it. I think it's bold. I think I, I, I think I'm, I think they're recognizing, God damn, you've been really fucking good. You were player of the yeah. year last year. You might be it this year. He will be an All American. I kind of, I kind of like it. Okay, I don't mind it at all. Okay. Um, I think you got to be careful. I mean, you can't do it every year. You can't have a player every year that you do it with, or then it loses its luster, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't think. I don't think you count your money when you're sitting at the table. How's he remembered you, uh, if they lose in the second round? Poorly. Very poorly. Yeah, yeah. I would say. Yeah, very poorly by every neutral college basketball fan and then Purdue fans are working overtime to make the argument he's still one of the best I think they'd give up at that point yeah don't you if if they get beaten the second round to, to anybody um I don't know who they play in the second round I, I don't well Purdue fans have been doing this for for decades now so they they're comfortable with like getting bounced early and then they've been molded and then this. spending all offseason saying actually we were good yeah and you guys all had it wrong um 
but yeah, that would that would be tough. I I I don't know. I I I saw it and I was like, of course he's going to someday be in a position where this would make sense. But I just felt yeah. like I I don't like. You know what it takes away though? It takes away. I don't like doing it during the season. It takes away bringing him back in like six or seven years. Right. It takes away that night. It takes away Zach that Eady pop, night. Yeah. 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 I guess you can still have it, but but it takes away a little bit. Uh, I'm reminded of San Diego State hanging the 2020 Mountain West Championship banner. I think they were were they undefeated? We we've done this before on the show, but it's like the one I point to. I I think they were undefeated, or they had only lost one. They were absolutely rolling. They clinched the Mountain West. The season's still going on. They hang the ba- the next home game. They hang a banner yeah. to say we're Mountain West champions with like three games left in the season, and then they lost a couple down the stretch, and then COVID happened. So I think I think San Diego State hanging that banner, um, started COVID. Just completely started COVID. Kim Something Mul- to think about. Kim Mulkey sucks too. Kim Mulkey sucks. All right, Brandon's turn. Go ahead. Well, What's up? There's so much ad. we can talk about. What? Do an ad. Twin Peaks is the ultimate sports lodge with wall-to-wall TVs for every fan. Hey, guess what? It's going to have a tournament soon. March Madness. Gonna be, you're going to need TVs everywhere. Well, go to Twin Peaks. The Twin Peaks Dose Million Bracket Challenge is now open. Fill out your bracket today. TwinPeaksBracketChallenge.com. Every lodge has a winner. There's a $50 gift card for top bracket at every lodge, and the best bracket overall wins free Twin Peaks for a year. The perfect bracket wins $2 million. Catch scenic views of every game all tournament long at the number one sports bar. Enter the Twin Peaks Dose Million Bracket Challenge today at TwinPeaksBracketChallenge.com. Again, enter the Twin Peaks Dose Million Bracket Challenge at TwinPeaksBracketChallenge.com. All right. There was a there was a tweet. Dave Portnoy had a tweet le- over the weekend saying LeBron James has never been funny, right? And there's this clip of these women laughing at LeBron James, um, laughing their heads off. And he said, I don't know what's going on here because LeBron James has never been funny. However, all- other tweets came out saying we read his lips. And he, <laughs> LeBron James, when talking to these two women, says, first of all, Happy International Women's Day. Yeah. That's, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. That's, that's fucking very, that's hilarious. Funny. International Women's Day. And they go, oh, thank you. Oh, Ram- oh. Rambus' wife and Jeannie Buss. That, Je- hold on. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Je- yeah. Right? That's How old is Jeannie Buss? Yeah. That's who that is? That's who Phil Jackson used to run through? Okay. No, it's not? Jeannie Buss is 62. Run through is crazy. <laughs> run through is crazy. <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> That's who Phil Jackson used to Probably. be in a relationship with. Right? <laughs> All I'm saying run, is I'm trying to compliment. Run through. That's it. <laughs> run through. Is I'm trying straight. to compliment. <laughs> run through is in, uh, She's solely an insult. She's 62. Yes. I'm trying to say she looks great for 62, yeah, and y'all yeah. are getting in the way. This yeah. is one of the most powerful women in all of sports, Brandon. And you're saying she's getting no, run through. No. Well, give me your list. Most powerful women in Shit. sports. Um, Give me your list. Jamel Hill, one. Jamel, yeah, Jamel Hill, Hill, Megan Rapino, uh, Becky Hammond. Megan Rapino's uh, got to be on there. Yeah, probably Rapino. Um, Caitlin Clark is getting there, and um, Sue Bird. I mean, she arguably had like maybe the best career of anyone ever in any sport. So. Probably like Monet Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Name twelve women in sports. <laughs> no, twelve women. Go. 12 women, okay. It, currently. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 12 current women. Uh, Brianna Stewart. One. Elena Deladon. Two. Caitlin Clark. Three. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Paige Bukers. Four. Uh, oh, my God. I'm blanking on uh, – oh, can I go coaches, too? Sure. No. Just women women no. in sports. Okay. Angel Reese. Five. Um. TJ, oh, TJ oh, yeah, TJ, you want one? Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Coco Golf. Six. You're halfway there. <laughs> Venus Williams. Uh, Serena Williams. Uh, mm. I, that, that, I say no. Okay. Um, holy shit. <laughs> We've been talking about. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Nothing. I've said Caitlin Clark. I've said Angel Reese. I've said we were talking about that. We're early. six, right? No, we're we're beyond. We're at like eight. We're at eight. Let's say we're at eight. Okay, four to go. Current, current, current. Uh, Alex Morgan. Nine. 
Um, <laughs> Mallory Pugh. Good answer, Connor. Yeah. So two more. Mm-hmm. Fuck. What other sports? <laughs> <laughs> what other sports are there? Um. Oh, uh, Haley Van Lith. Eleven. Okay. And <laughs> shit. Now this is tough, dude. Um, who's who's how about, how about same school, different sport? One one woman. One. Oh, Livy Dunn. There we there go. go. Thank good you. Job. Yeah, that was good. That was awesome. That was a good way to end it. Killed that. Um. Anyway, I just thought that was funny that that LeBron clip. That LeBron clip was one of those Twitter things that just feeds us for a day, then we move on. We eat yeah. off of that and we go. Yeah. It's a great clip. Great clip of LeBron. Definitely not a not definitely not an instance of uh, you know, kind of being a non story and people blowing it up because it's LeBron. You don't think we do non stories here all the time? No, I didn't say us. I said the Oh, okay. Yeah. I said the internet. It was just like, Yeah, no, you're right about that. I watched the clip one time and I was like, It's a guy talking to two people he knows well. <laughs> <laughs> um we could do it. do you want to uh, do your uh, your Dune two thing? Uh yeah, I saw Dune Two. I mean, I have thoughts on it. I just don't know if I want to spoil the movie for anybody. But we, we, you we, saw it twice. I saw it for the second time yesterday with Zoopy. Yeah. No, I don't really care about your review at all. I mean, you can do that at the end if you want. Okay. But I, I. You're gonna you're spoiling my review. So. Oh, is that part of the yeah, review? Okay, of okay, review. okay, okay. Um, no, that's part of the review. End of show review. spoilers would be cool. I think. End of show spoilers. So we're, if his review is gonna have spoilers, we're gonna do it at the end of the show. So, post credit. So, that, so that way, if people haven't seen the movie and they don't want it to be spoiled, they could tune out and they'd still see an entire show. Whereas if people have seen the movie and they want spoilers, spoilers, then they could just stick through the end. That's how a lot of shows do it, I think. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll talk about Dune two at the end of the show. Um, Russell Wilson's a Steeler. He's gonna start for him, huh? Almost. Like he's got, he's right? got to right. He's got to. But like Russell Wilson stinks, <laughs> but doesn't stink. Okay, I think this is. Didn't Baker Mayfield fucking stink a couple years ago? And then he got to the right spot and he, he didn't stink, and then he just signed another big deal? I think Russell Wilson, I think talent's still there, right? Talent, All his talent didn't just seep out of his body. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to make sense of how good he is because he seems to – everybody seems to hate him. So when people talk about him – They do, and I don't know why. Yeah. But I, I – I, I, I thought it was because he's corny as fuck, but then the Broncos saying we will pay you eighty five million dollars to go away kind of kind of speaks to maybe he's not. They're paying him thirty five million dollars this year. Or maybe he's like not that. a barrel of fun, this Russell Wilson guy. But they but are I, I, a lot of assholes in football. Yeah, that, a lot of bad quarterbacks to where like he's not he, he's not that. But yeah, I don't know. Also, the the one big answer here is. Is he a good quarterback? I don't know. Is he better than what the Steelers have run out there the last couple of years? Yes. 100% correct, right? Yeah. I mean, he's better than Kenny Pickett right now. I think I think Indiana State belongs in the NCAA tournament. I do. Um, I So, Indiana State loses to Drake. Um, I'm sorry. I'm just seeing Blutman's ticker. And uh, <laughs> he, has, he has given me one free pass to talk about college basketball for, for a match. Are we still five minutes. pretending we don't talk, talk all the <laughs> uh, <laughs> What? Are we still pretending we don't talk college basketball? I'm reading the ticker. Blutman, what are you doing? I'm reading the ticker. I do like the – put a maximum on there. Maximum five-minute discussion. Um, Indiana State is now on the bubble because they lost to Drake, and uh, Drake? there's there's a lot of uh, – a lot of people are getting into a frenzy about how Indiana State has to make it in, and I'm just here to say if the Buckeyes do, in fact, win the next two and play ourselves onto the bubble, I – I am going full heel villain. Like fuck, fuck Indiana State. Fuck these small ass schools that yeah. would not win two games in the Big Ten. Because uh, people are so fired up about the idea of a mediocre power conference team taking the spots of like New Mexico and Indiana State and all that. Yeah. And I generally agree, but now it's affecting me. So there you go. That was the only college basketball. No, that that that's fine. Uh, also, this is the problem with with doing that shit in January, saying this guy right here. Um, Avila, right? Avila, yeah. This guy right here is going to be the darling of right. March. Everybody's right. going to love this guy. It's going to be amazing. And then he, they fucking don't win their conference tournament. Right. And now people are like, no, we still have to have him. Oh, just because you decided yeah. that in January doesn't mean that he has to be Yeah, you did this. You did this. I don't even know who I'm pointing to, but you did it. You. It's your fault. It's your fault Indiana State's not going to make the tournament. Don't blame the Buckeyes. Don't blame 
Uh, also, you know, their, their res- Seton Hall or pro- like it's their resume kind of sucks. See, uh, Have Indiana, you seen Indiana State's resume. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good at all. You know whose fault it is? It's Kyle Enright, who's work who works here. His brother's fault. True. Yeah. He hit that big go ahead. Kyle Enright is the one that looks like Mook, right? Yeah. No, that's red that's hair. Blutman. Yeah. No, Enright looks just like Mook. Yeah. Do we right? have a, we have a disproportionate number of? It's pretty. Heads, right? Yeah. There's too many redheads here. We got to start getting rid of the redheads. We got to find a way to get Kyle Enright into one shining moment. His brother yeah, is the starting point guard for Drake, who's right. going to have a potential Cinderella run. Maybe we, like, coach Kyle into maybe running down on the court hugging his brother or something. Um, Connor, what color is your hair? Strawberry blonde. Red. Strawberry my beard is red. Blonde. My beard is more red than my hair. 17. Hot July moon. Saw everything. My buddy was. Well, she just had us all uh, singing a song about her getting fucked the first time. Yeah. Yeah. My buddy uh, came and visited. You guys all met him mm-hmm. um, on Friday. A friend from uh, back home, a uh, cool guy, guy I've known for a cool guy, certified cool guy. He gave he he's preparing his notes on everybody, and he's going to share them with me. And I'm going to read report cards on how you all treated him. Huh? Um, oh fuck! But he is a a ginger. He has red hair. He is a pale man with red hair. He has a long beard and long hair, uh, not unlike one Liam Blutman. Mm-hmm. When I introduced Liam Blutman to my friend. Uh, Liam Blutman just immediately started laughing and his face turned beet red. And it was very, very funny. <laughs> I was just like, Liam, I want you to meet my friend Andy. And he just started, he's just like, it's humorous. It's a humorous situation. <laughs> he does say things like <laughs> That's how he said. I was like, what are you laughing about? And he's like, well. It's a humorous situation. Look at him. Look at me. This is a humorous situation we found ourselves in. <laughs> I, was, I was laughing so hard. I just realized, but Blut- every conversation with Blutman does end up with him explaining why he likes something. Yeah. Well, it's a humorous situation. <laughs> I was like, I was just introducing you to a guy, and he's like, it's funny. <laughs> what was I supposed to do? Uh, did you guys watch the Oscars last night? I didn't. I watched it on Twitter like everybody else, I guess, or or like some people. I saw John Cena naked on Twitter. What? Yeah. So he presented, he was just. I thought it was funny. I don't know. That like, is funny. Was, yeah. Best costume design. It was the moment of the night, yeah. I thought it was I thought it was a fine comedic bit. They were talking about how one time there was a streaker at the Oscars like yeah. forty years ago. Right. Wouldn't it be crazy if there was a streaker at the Oscars now and then John Cena like peeked out from behind? Was he was like, too scared to commit it. to it. Yeah. And then he walked across funny... the stage with his dick out. I'm over John Cena. How could you love John Cena? Why are you over John Cena? I don't know. What John Cena did? You, it, every time I, I look at him, I feel like he looks like like a Walking Big Bang Theory or something. Just boring CBS sitcom. What? He's lost. Huh? All, he's lost all his coolness. He walked onto the know. Oscar stage with nothing but uh, a know. small square in front I don't of know. his. This might be an L. I just I'm over John. There you were. Think, you think Jim Parsons would have done that? <laughs> Bazinga. <laughs> <laughs> there were haters, or um, I don't know if the right word is haters. They were theorists mm-hmm. saying that this was an uh, ooh, Illuminati humiliation ritual. Yeah. And that this was John Cena selling his soul into Hollywood. Mm. No, no, that's. What? They put him naked on stage in front of the whole world. But wouldn't that mean everybody who's famous has been naked on stage at the Oscars? Because that's not true. People humiliate themselves in different ways, Brandon. I'm just telling you what the Illuminati people were saying. Uh, being an Illuminati person, or, or being a person that screams Illuminati every time, has to be fucking exhausting. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. got to be fucking exhausting. Enjoy yeah. something one time. John Cena is up there with his cock and balls swinging. Enjoy it. <laughs> don't it's, ju- funny. Don't, it's funny. It's funny. It's funny. It's funny. It's funny. Yeah. You don't have to be like, well, actually... This is the people who run the world are making him do this. I enjoyed the I enjoyed the Oscars, and I'm usually a guy that's like a, looking for a reason to be a hater. I don't know. I enjoyed him. I I know I've only seen like probably ten percent of the movies that were even nominated. I have never in my life watched the Oscars. Really? Yeah, I don't know. I just it's just not something I've ever. I think award shows in general are terrible, and yeah, I just I just never watched it. Because usually uh, the the movies that are up for Best Picture are just pretentious and hoity-toity and make you... But how could you, if you've never watched it... I know what's up for Best Picture. But if you've never watched it, how would you know it's the, the award shows are terrible? Oh, I've watched award shows before. You watched, have you watched the Oscars? I've though? never watched the Oscars. I've, I think what I if, watched... What if, what if Brandon Walker watches the Oscars and he's like, holy shit, I've been waiting my whole life for this? One time in, uh, I don't know if it was 93 or 94, maybe 95, I think it was 95, David Letterman hosted it and I was a huge Letterman guy. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to tune in and watch what he says. I watched like his first five minutes and it was cringy and awkward and I just I bailed out. Yeah. It was. It it's was hard. hard. It's a hard... I thought, I thought Kimmel did a great job. It's a hard gig yeah. to host because... 
yeah, you have to be funny, but also um, not too funny almost. Yeah, like not too funny. Yeah, I like uh, it because it's it's like there's like five days a year where everybody on Twitter is watching and talking about the same thing. Right. Like Super Bowl right. is like the sports version of it, where no matter what, like non sports fans are watching the Super Bowl and tweeting about it. In this case, non like movie fans even watch the Oscars just because it's like the big thing that's on it. I like when everybody's tweeting about the same shit. I'm yeah. Like, also, there was three wrestlers there. The Rock, Cena, and who else? Bad Bunny. Who? Bad Bunny. Bad Co- Cousin Sal. Cousin Sal was there. Cousin Sal was there. So that's four wrestlers. Bad Bunny. Didn't Cousin Sal wrestle in a... Did he? WCW, I think. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, Cousin Sal was in a in a match at Once Upon a Time. Um, To, to, to say Bad Bunny again. Bad Bunny? <laughs> <laughs> Oppenheimer. Cleaned up. Yeah. Well deserved. I just had to put that out there. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. It won Best Picture. Mm -hmm. Best Director. Best Director, Best Actor, Best best Supporting Actor. Yep. And then some technical awards, or did it have... Yeah. Did you see see the clip of Val Pacino (laughs) announcing Oppenheimer as a winner? All I did was see the reaction of people saying, like, oh, my God, Pacino was terrible. I didn't... When I saw that, I don't want to see the actual clip. Oh, it was so funny. He just like I think he was supposed to read the nominees. He didn't read any nominees. He said it. He 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 read the winner in a form of a question. He's like, I, I'm obviously paraphrasing. I don't remember what he said, but he's like, and who could it be? Could it be Oppenheimer? <laughs> like he opened it up and he's like, is it Oppenheimer? I think you see it. Al Pacino's it, been attending the Oscars for what fifty years? Fiftieth yeah. <laughs> year anniversary of Godfather Two. He said, "Could it be Oppenheimer?" He said something my like, "My eyes see Oppenheimer." Like, might, might my I eyes see Oppenheimer. Might I see Oppenheimer? And everyone's like, "Does that mean we won, or does that mean?" <laughs> and then the music starts playing as he's still trying to like figure it out. He's like, "Yeah, Oppenheimer, yeah." <laughs> the, la- the last time Kimmel hosted was the. Uh, was it the last time? I, I don't remember all the hosts through the years, but uh, was it the last time was the Moonlight thing? He hosted uh, the Moonlight thing, yeah. Yeah. Which I was like, why would they make another really old actor like, right. read, like ever read out the... Yeah. I don't know, because I, I, they, they, it, it seems to be like a prestige thing that like let's give the legend right. the biggest award to, to, you know, he's got the gravitas for this moment. Yeah. But then the legend comes out and he's like, I would rather be anywhere else in the world yeah. than right <laughs> here reading, reading this envelope. I've never actually paid attention to this bullshit. I'm just sitting here. Yeah. I don't know why y'all got me on stage. Uh, didn't he just, he just had a kid. He's like 80. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Shared a cab with my mom once. Yeah, Kimball, Kimball, oh. I li- I, yeah, Kimball said uh, when he was introducing him, he's like, thank God, he's like uh, joining us now, and then he, he went through the credentials, and he's like, and we're lucky enough that he found a babysitter for tonight, <laughs> Al Pacino. <laughs> um, I, I completely forgot about that until he said that. When did she? When did your mom share a cab with Al Pacino? <laughs> Probably 30 years ago, 40 years ago, I don't know, 35 years ago, long time ago. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, let's see, what else? What, do we need what to else? do another yeah. ad? Yeah. I'll do another ad. All right. Busters. Dave and Busters is the best place to watch basketball this March. 86%. 86% of American employees will spend at least some time at work keeping track of the March basketball. Stop pretending to work. Watch the games at Dave and Busters. On March 21st, Dave and Busters nationwide will have an all-day happy hour to celebrate the first full day of games. I love Dave and Busters so much. I love uh, what's your what's your go-to arcade game, Brandon? You go to Dave and Busters. Have you figured one out? I, I thought I figured out the, uh, you know, the one where the light just goes in a circle. And yeah. You got to stop it in between yeah. the jackpot you zone. You figure it out. Uh, there was a time in my life where I was really honed in on that. And then I went to Dave and Buster's like six months ago and yeah. I completely lost that skill. I want to get that skill back. The last Dave and Buster's I went to was at the Palisades Mall in, uh, I can't, I don't know if that's in Jersey or New York. I think it might be in New York. Um, I went to the Palisades Mall in, in New York. They have on the second floor a Dave and Buster's and their basketball shooting, you know, the, the hot shot machine. It's just full ass free throws. Oh, fifteen foot free wow. throws, and I sat there for days just just shooting free throws. That was my. Favorite Are we making part. them? Mm. Mm. Uh, stop pretending to work. Come to Dave and Buster's on March twenty first for all day happy hour and all day basketball. Dave and Buster's. Dave and Buster's. Dave and Buster's. All right, uh, we got some. We got some fun sponsors. Dave we had our uh, all night grad party there. Really? Yeah. Did you guys have that after graduation? You go and. Have a party sponsored by the school? We had after prom. Yeah. Yeah. No. It was a great time. <laughs> no, we didn't have that. Connor, I was just looking at you, and I got reminded of something I meant to bring up with you a while ago. 
Okay. Uh, are we talking like weeks ago? Weeks ago. Okay. That has been festering with me for a while that I need to have a conversation with you. Sure. A couple of weeks ago, I made the point that I believe when you go to the grocery store and you take your stuff out to your to your car, I always take the cart all the way back inside the store. Mm-hmm. There were people in the act that was like, no, you should take it to the cart rack or the corral because that's what the people do. That, that gives them something to do, gives that's their job. And you texted me that night and said, for the record, during COVID, I worked at Target. And Art boy, yeah. And you taking your cart all the way back inside would make my job a hundred times harder. Would have ruined the entire system, yeah. Why? Because How does that get in your way if I take it all the way back and put it up myself? Now, I'm sure it's changed since COVID, but I was actually cleaning every single cart that came into the store. So I wouldn't know if you brought it back into the store if it was clean or not. Damn. Okay, so, well, that, 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 I get that. Also, a lot of people, when they do bring it back into the store, they don't put it in right. Or they leave it somewhere that's not where all the carts are, and then you have to go and go on a special no, mission di- to get the cart. Dickheads will always be dickheads. Some people will take it in, but actually just leave it like out by itself right beside the carts, and mm-hmm. that just gets in the way. I put it right back on that rack. All right. I, I turn it around. I back it in. Yeah. It's okay, but it's still. I think it's preferred if you just leave it. Just don't to know the how that people. would make a, your job 100 times harder. Because the cart people know what they're doing, and they have a system. Do you pick up after you uh, see a movie in the theater? Yes, yeah. every time. Do you? Uh, yeah, have to. Um, Got to do that. Yeah. So, that was my answer. Does do people not do that? Oh uh, yeah, most people don't. It seems mm-hmm. like I don't know. You, you're walking out of a theater, you just see there's a chaos, giant or, trash can right beside yeah. every movie theater. Yeah, yeah. At games, at, at like uh, NBA game or something, I want to do it there. Sometimes, sometimes I'll leave a popcorn bucket or something because. They'll just come through with blowers and that shit. Hmm. Cap. What? They don't? No, they... Cap, that you pick up after yourself. I do pick up after myself. You rarely pick up after yourself on the yak. Oh, around here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, this is that's different. You, you left half a Rangoon in your chair on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> you took a bite out of a Rangoon and left the other half on your chair. Where did that Rangoon go? <laughs> I picked it up and threw it away. I, it was on my chair? Yes. That's that's tough. I was looking for it that's later. Tough. That's, that's tough. That's on the yak. That's not, uh, that's right, not out right, in right. public. That's not out in public. Besides, you you know, you have to come behind me and clean my Rangoons. You're my Rangoon guy. Uh, yeah, that's, that's in the job description. You uh, don't want to inconvenience strangers. Right. But you're fine with inconveni- inconveniencing well, us. Family. Correct, yes. Yeah. No problem. Right. No problem whatsoever. You all right? right? You should. Yeah, not really. I'm stretching the back. The back's hurt. You want to, Ebo, look out there and see if Tate's here. Don't talk to Tate. Um, also, breaking NFL news, semi, uh, T. Higgins just requested a trade from the Bengals. Wait, oh. didn't they just, did they tag him? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. And he wants out. Damn. Uh, so, Ross is on the move, and now T. Higgins might be on the move as damn. well. Damn. Hmm. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I Conversation with you real quick. Wait, we just had a conversation. Second one. Second. Okay, okay. Can we have two conversations, Mean? That's fine. Yeah. It's not right there. But All right. Um, Fletcher Cox just retired. Yep. Uh, you guys threw a huge party for, for Jason Kelsey because he's a Hall of Fame lineman. Fletcher Cox, do you think he's a Hall of Fame lineman? Yeah. I need him to go to the Hall of Fame. We Another team captain. We don't have a Hall of Famer at Mississippi State, and I, I'd like for him to be the first. Yeah. I mean, obviously, two very different personalities. One has been in the spotlight way more recently than the other um one just does his job and uh doesn't you know yeah no cloud chase he he did it uh fletcher cox did it in a more traditional very very classy way i thought that jason kelsey was still classy but it was more front facing he wasn't wearing a sleeve well he also was doing it i don't know if you saw the story there was the um the trainer who taped him up and everything because the trainer got cancer and he wanted one last time for the trainer to like you know, wrap them up and get them ready. So it, it was partially that. They wanted to make the guy work some more? Even though yeah, it was, it was you know, yeah. emotional moment. But, you know, Fletcher Cox, very, very sad. <laughs> make the guy work. <laughs> yeah, sounds like he just want to make the guy work. You know? no. Dude, you're not off just because you got cancer. <laughs> tape me up. And I'm not playing. Just tape me up. Um, Chris Jones got paid, too. Mm-hmm. Big weekend for Mississippi State. I thought he already got paid. Like, no. What was, what was at the start of the season? He was holding out. and then He, he got – I think he got – uh, one year, like a one year. They yeah. just they signed it through the 
They just kicked the can down the road. Yeah. They're like, let's just get you back on the field. We'll figure this out later. That's exactly what they yeah. did. And they won a Super Bowl because of it. Okay. Uh, I don't think he gets uh, – Mahomes is clearly Mahomes. Um, but yeah, I feel, no, I feel, no doubt about it. Yeah. But, but I feel like sometimes <laughs> some sometimes for the Chiefs, like – There he is. Kelsey will get the second credit where Chris Jones is fucking amazing. Yeah. All right. Tate. What's going on? How What's you up, doing? Tate? First time doing this. Just put it on. Or Do it. Yeah. yeah, just put them on. What, this is your first time wearing headphones? I did wake up Mincy once, but I was a little. But like wearing headphones, like what do you mean? This is your like first this. time doing? Oh, first time. I guess. I guess. I guess. I guess we have no choice but to believe him with the way. That's all right. Dude, uh, your left ear. You, you pull it. Pull it. I think I have a big head. Is the no? Part. No, the no, headphones no. are right. <laughs> I, you, 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 the headphones are too. <laughs> oh, this is somebody fix the headphones for. This is worse than our handshake, Titus. No, I'm. I'm. Uh, Y'all had I'm an awkward I, handshake. We had an awkward handshake. We. Um, no, we didn't. We, firm. we had firm. A firm one. Yeah, yeah. We had the. We, it was. It's a classic situation. Yeah. of Just going back and forth with fist bump and yeah. handshake. <laughs> now you came in. You came in fist Holy or you shit. came. That's the worst thing I've ever done in my you life. came in fist or hand. Well, so here's the thing. I am a. I'm a handshake guy. Yeah. But I was guessing that Tate was going to be a fist bump guy. Yeah. And that's where I made my mistake. I should have just stuck with what I do. I should have just played my game. So you and go was, fist, he goes hand. I was trying to be courteous. <laughs> yeah. And maybe he was trying to be courteous too, but I, I, as I approached him, I went fist, which I rarely do, but I was yeah. like, I'm trying to welcome him to the office. I'm sure he's a fist bump guy. Yeah. But Tate is a salt of the earth Ohio, and so he was like, uh -huh. here's my hand. But he saw your fist, so he switched to fist. Yeah, when and you I switched, switched to hand. The hand, and then we did that for, I shit you not, 12 minutes. <laughs> 12 minutes straight of... <laughs> And then we finally got it. Uh, Tate, I, I feel like uh, you might be a candidate for the guy who's the new guy who um, for like six months. Like the fact that you were just like, I don't know how to put on headphones. I'm worried that I'm worried <laughs> that this is good. Like for six months, you're going to be like, I don't know what I'm doing here. Like I'm in, I'm still the new guy. Is this, is this like a is this a brand that we're trying out? Is this a no, that, that was a, that was a tough look, <laughs> tough run in with you, especially when I got a blog release in a little bit. My five goals at Barstool. And goal five is to work with you two. So mm. this is a big moment for me. I say okay. some nice things about you guys. Really? Right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, Family. Absolutely. But a uh, tough start. Tough start. But no, I, can I you can't. switch? Hold on. Before you go further, can you like not choke yourself with the cord? That's bothering me. He put them on. What, oh, that's bothering me. On? What's going on with the cord? <laughs> I can't do anything right on this. <laughs> Uh, Connor, Connor's sandbagging you right now. Yeah. No. He put him off. Connor, Connor, Connor senses a threat. He senses right. that there might be a new couch boy. Oh, there's only I was room. trying to help him. There's only room for two. All right. And, we're uh, live. We're good. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could tighten him up, too, on the sides if you want to. You could Thanks. scrunch him. Oh. So, first day, Tate. Yep. <laughs> uh, you got here early as fuck, huh? Yeah, and that – I didn't mean anything by that. That's, <laughs> that's all right. That's, that's what I – so, I met no with – No offense. I met with Paige, and, yeah. I, and she said – you know, what time do you want to come in? 10 is standard. Yeah. And I said, well, I'm, there's no way I'm sitting at home till 10. What time do the earliest people come in? And she literally said, Big Cat and Brandon Walker are the first two here. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, that's not a bad uh, bad spot to be. So yeah. that's yeah. the plan for now is to get here early. Yeah, yeah you'll – I think you'll – how long will that last, do you think? He, you got to understand the man's been on a teacher's I know, for a while. I know. So it'll last, but I, I yeah. think I think eventually. First period started at seven, so we had to be there. Yeah. At six seven period. in the fucking morning. First See, this period. is my problem with American school. There's no reason to have kids at a place from seven to fucking three. That's just crazy. That's crazy. That's too much school. You know how sc how long school needs to last? School needs to last from like nine to one. That's 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 plenty. That's plenty of time for school every day. I wouldn't be here if that was the case. I'd no. still be a teacher. But I'm just saying, don't. There's no seven, eight hour school days ridiculous. And there's a lot of fluff too. Honestly, coming from it for the last decade, like there's a lot of things you could take out of the school day and and still get the job. Done. You periods could last thirty minutes. Agreed. And now they got us teaching fucking eight. That was the first time I've ever cussed on air. Uh, fucking eighty four minute oh, yeah. reading classes. So, 84 yeah, minutes. Yeah, we do block scheduling where you have 84 minutes straight with a kid. Brutal. Yeah, that's Damn. that's that stuff. But you know what? You're here now. I'm back. Yep. You're here now. Uh so what are you what are your other five goals? Uh number 1 is to become the editor in chief. Um <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, it's a, it's gonna be. A I'm not I'm not laughing at the. Uh, I don't think that's too lofty of a goal. I'm just laughing at they won that. That's yeah. Well, I created a Google sorry. form for anyone that wants to join in the office pool of the day and time when I get that that's position. Awesome. That's awesome. Putting up a cash prize for that. That's awesome. Um, I'm getting in that. 
Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. It'll be published here soon. Um, number two is to get involved in college football content. Um, I reached out to the editors um, and said, like, hey, now that I'm full time, I'd love to be able to sit on the couch and, you know, mm -hmm. blog college football. And they said that uh, Big T is our primary. Mm -hmm. So I can maybe play second fiddle a okay. little bit. So uh, I also thought he was the primary of the free throw shooting contest till I had to drive fucking six hours to do it. <laughs> um, yeah, there's, there's going to be a good blog coming out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> number three is to create a following. Because okay. Dave, when Dave reached out to me, he said, like, hey, I know you can write. I know you can do this. Um, we got to care about more than what you say other than just Ohio State sports and Brown sports. Yeah. Um, so then I put my head down and started making people – care about my high school girls basketball team mm -hmm. which we had twelve thousand people watch us lose in the fucking sweet 16 yeah. the other night um number four is to get a third teardrop um on my face i got you'll have to read the blog and then number five is to work with you two so oh well good Damn. i think we could uh so you want to be a permanent couch boy Ebo, you're out i'm sorry <laughs> all right check the goal off. <laughs> <laughs> um all right. Well, welcome. are you going to New York? I was fully thought I was going to New York this week. Yeah. But then Dave, who makes the decisions around here, said uh, he needs to be there when I'm there. And what's the what's the point of the New York? Is is you so talk so years. much shit about those people that you have to face the music? Yeah. Is that the idea. Yeah. The idea was that I that's I chirped enough that I can't just run away to Chicago and stay yeah. away. So and I'm whenever you're ready, Dave. Whenever you're ready. Oh, he's, he doesn't watch this show, Tate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't know this show exists. So don't, you. if you want to talk to Dave, you're going to yeah, have to go gotta, on something else. Okay. Gotta, yeah. 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 I don't, I don't probably know. Probably not at Barstool. Yeah. You probably have to go hang out at 11 or something. I, I did get his phone number, which is crazy. From that uh, free throw thing. Yeah. He's like, here's my number. I was like, I don't know if I got nervous seeing that. So maybe I'll text him. I do like the Tate's here because we can talk about the free throw thing again. Like, I think, I, I think one of my goals is. Every so often, I want to see how long we can go. <laughs> <laughs> I want five years from now to just still be talking about how I'm such a hero for the free throw. <laughs> the um, I, just, I want to continue that conversation. I didn't even do. I, I I didn't succeed in the free throw thing at all. But I was there watching you guys and mm -hmm. I, just hearing basketballs bouncing kind of gives me a little flashback to just being really stuck good. here at six a.m. You want to you want to get back out there? I, d I mean, you want to, Titus, you were a workhorse that night. Thank you, Tate. I thank you. The this funniest is, this thing, is what I wanted. I wanted more of this. Yeah, thank well, you. Well, the, the funniest thing was, I mean, you said you, you could go 14 of 15, and you, you ruin it. Utter because, failure. Because you missed one. Yeah. So, But I, I, I will say, I didn't get there till like 4.15 in the morning, and we were already at like 30 or whatever. There was a time where there was no chance. Once we got those stars aligned, though, I think it was yeah. – Pretty clear we were gonna get it once we got a couple more. We had like a, a good rotation. Rangers, yeah. yeah, yeah, we had a we had a good uh, group. So, um, uh, future editor in chief Tate. Yeah, you think? I, I, I mean, um, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to call for another man's job. This isn't me saying no. And I'm I'm not. The, I, this isn't me saying the current editor in chief, who I definitely know. I know who yeah. that is at Barstool for sure. What um, What's your favorite thing about the current editor in chief? Uh, I think the way they edit, but they don't just edit; they do it in a chief way. Um, I got a booger, and I think that's that's probably my favorite thing. Uh, so yeah, I'm not. You know, I'm a huge fan of that person. Yeah, they, them. Um, yeah, he, he, he yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, is it a white guy? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So nothing against them. I'm not saying. Yeah. I'm just if you're asking me, does Tate have the potential to rise to certain heights? I would say yeah. I would awesome. say. Thanks for the, say, yeah. Uh, he could do that. Vote of confidence. Yeah. Uh, Keep in mind, he's he's putting you over a figment of his own imagination because he doesn't know who it is. I, I understand that, but I mean, I've been here blogging part time five years, and I've had we've had three. So yeah. odds are, at some point, it's going to open up. Yeah, um, I'm not going like Napoleon yet and like uh, overthrowing it. Yeah, I do think I have that in my is arsenal it, if I need to. But you could foment insurrection at any moment. Uh, I maybe by lunch okay. if I had to. Right. But but right now, I'm just going to try and organically earn it. Okay. Is so. it is it Nate? It's Nate. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just it just came to me. Yeah. yeah. Um All right, Connor, uh Dune 2. You saw it for a second. Have you seen Dune 2 yet, Tate? I have not seen Dune 2. All right. Well, we're we're about to spoil it, so. Okay. But I don't even I don't I haven't seen Dune 1. So, oh, you know. Locked in on the Buckeyes only right now. 
I love this. I, love this. <laughs> I fucking love this guy. Titus, can I ask you a question? We, sh- we should do a Buckeye podcast. At Jeez, read the blog today, Titus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be in there. <laughs> you asking him a question? I was going to ask. I didn't want to interrupt the Dune 2. What's your uh, dozen situation? What's your Oh. Spot? This motherfucker's coming in hot. Oh, he's just coming. He's well, just I got- dropping bomb. He's just trying to like, he's yeah. like. He's like, I, I like the situation. I like the structure here. But what if I just went ahead and just fucked it all up? <laughs> right, yeah. And built my own structure. Uh, I'm, I'll answer his dozen situation. Go ahead. He's on a team with Ken Jack, who uh, he and Ken Jack are tolerate each other. And then he's on a team with Ben Mintz, who occasionally just fucks everything up totally. I have dinner scheduled with Ben Mintz tomorrow night. He DM'd me at 7 in the morning. Well, buddy, so. you're going to learn all about Ben Mintz. <laughs> you're gonna- yep. So that'll be good. Um, that'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah, want, but no. I want, I want your notes for, after that. Well, I, I asked Big Cat. I was like, is that a good idea? He goes, yup, and yeah. bring the blog. Uh-huh. So <laughs> that'll be good. But no, Titus, I, I'm going to do a blog this week about, you know, potential dozen teams. Okay. And I don't know. Got three Buckeyes here. Listen, yeah. yeah, yeah. I uh, Brand, Brandon is uh, he's locked in for sure. Um, I like my team. I like Team Smokin, but, yeah, we tried to trade Mincy. Yeah, you, you did. The trade got vetoed. You upset the whole league because you try try to trade one of your guys. So yeah, you, you don't like your. Team. I remember that, huh? You don't like your it's team. The business, much. Brandon. This isn't this isn't kumbaya charity. Like you, you you see an opportunity to make your team better, you have to you have to take the opportunity. So yeah, I think everyone on my team understands that. And um, I mean, I'm not just gonna throw you on your on my team because you you run an Ohio State crew neck. Mm-hmm. You know, like but this, that does this help. A, it does help. Does but it like hurt. I'm not I'm not looking for drinking buddies. I'm not looking I'm looking for for guys that can. Well, like what, win me a championship. I was so. trying to think like niche categories. What are your guys's? I have many. Uh, yeah, you're very good. Cosby Show. That's crazy. Oh, that's <laughs> one of the seminal TV shows of the 1980s. Uh, the Cosby Show. That thing you do, Major League, WCW, and WWE are mine. Ooh. Um, mine is j- just basically Indiana Mr. Basketball. <laughs> I was saying I've, tried, I've tried other ones, and 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 Jeff's just like, just stick with Mr. Basketball. It's that's it's easy. Um. I, I had a good idea for actually a terrible idea, which I think makes it a good idea. The other day, I, as I was watching TV, I think I think I'm going to work towards my niche being um, prescription drug jingles, <laughs> <laughs> where you play the jingle from the prescription drug commercial, and I have to tell you if it's Jardians or <laughs> I have to tell you. <laughs> I'm I'm working on that. I'm studying that one. Um, because I fucking hate those commercials, and they just, they just live in my head nonstop. Uh, no, what's your niche category? Well, I was gonna ask, like, like, could I do Ohio high school mascots? Like, is yeah, this- yeah, yeah. I mean, KB does shit like that. Yeah, I tried Jeff. So the problem, and you'll learn this quick enough, is that Jeff, uh, Jeff's brain kind of stinks. And um, if you if you approach him with Matt, because I tried this with colleges, where I was like, I know a lot of college mascots, and I thought he would just be like, "What is Abilene Christian's mascot?" Uh-huh. I thought that would be the question. And then Jeff started peppering me with like. There are four schools west of the Mississippi oh. whose mascot has three vowels in it. Name them. Yeah, I'm not ready. I, for I was that. like, what the fuck, Jeff? So then I just went back to Indiana Mr. Basketball. So. Are you ready? This is a big Go moment ahead. for me, Brandon. I'm not trying to make you look bad, so I don't know any of these teams. So I'm just going to. I Have you done the Daily Dozen today? Should we? I have not. Um, I don't we, know. We should we should test Tate out on the Daily Dozen, see how good he'd be at the How about, what about uh, Van Buren? Jesus Christ, that's got to be one of the small schools. See, I didn't know. I don't know. If it was my niche, I would I would know that. But I've I mean I've been coaching basketball for ten years. Yeah. in Ohio. I don't know. See, it's a Danville, Cary, Springfield, the like, Cary Blue Devils, correct? Cary is the Blue Devils. There yep. you go. And that I mean, you're you've got to be reading the smallest Northwest Ohio school. I probably am. I, I'm just I, actually this is listed in order of alphabetical order of mascots. So it doesn't take into account how big this. There's a lot of Falcons, a lot of Eagles. Yep. You can I'm, just I'm gonna try to find a unique mascot, and then I'm gonna ask you. So y'all, y'all keep talking. That would be a. Uh, that would be fun. I, I can make Indiana high school mascots my niche. There you go. And yeah, if we we're on a team, just every every time we do a niche, it's just mascot. Huntington. Huntington. Uh, Huntington. No idea. Is the, that even in Ohio? Huntington, West it's Virginia. In Chillicothe. Chillicothe. It's in Chillicothe. Um, the Huntsman, <laughs> the Huntsman. There you go. I said Huntington. There you go. Yeah, the uh, a lot of Indians. Uh, yeah, that's Indiana. that. We're 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 switching that up a little bit. Uh, Parma, no Normandy, Normandy, 
Invaders. Yeah, Normandy Invaders. Go. That's, that's a good awesome. name. That's, that's a good. That's name. far away too, but that's a good one. All right, I'll stop. That's an awesome. There's a lot of there's a lot of fucking high schools in Ohio. Mm-hmm. There was that that list goes on forever. Take our sports seriously. There, you there go. are a lot of colleges in Ohio too. D three heavy. Yeah, there D3. Really a are. lot of colleges yeah. in Ohio that you don't realize are there. But there's some good. The Fremont Ro- Fremont Ross are the little giants. The little giants, purple and white. Wow, the little giants. That's pretty good. We're the blue aces. I thought the blue aces was cool. Blue aces is is, is very cool. A lot of panthers. A lot of panthers. Was that like a fighter pilot thing? It's just a straight spade, um, like gambling type thing. East how, Liverpool. How name... East Liverpool are the Potters. Huh. I might need to go buy an East Liverpool shirt. Uh, TJ, can you do the Beatles impression, please? On the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Tate. Well, I don't want to take up. We're going to do a Dune 2 review yep. here at the end of the show. Uh, but thanks. Tate, uh, you coming on my show today? Talk Bucks, Talk right? Talk Bucks. Yeah. We're hot. We're, f- we're really fucking hot. And I like it yeah. when the Bucks are hot. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Maybe thanks, guys. That. That's Tate. Thank you, Tate. Tate uh, will probably be a, a friend of the show. I would say so. Yeah. yeah but also, if, if one of his goals is to work with us, should we give him that? Like immediately, you know, like shouldn't you have to work toward it? Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, that's right. Like, you can't just step in and no immediately check boxes off. You got to work towards them. So. Also, I did say family at one point, and he did not reciprocate by saying family. Oh, damn! He said like absolutely or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, um, all right. Add. Dune, uh, add. We have another one. You got it. You got it. I don't have it. I, yeah. I did. We got to do, do our, our, our. Oh yeah, our tournament. You didn't give us the other ad sheet. Yeah, I did. Who's got it? I don't have it. Cool. Did you write? Is it? Is it the, the one you wrote the notes on? No, no. This is visible. That's not Twin Peaks Cars dot com. Ebo, you got us making. You look. My two. You got us looking like a bunch of dummies over here. My bad. <laughs> oh no. Wow. Where are you going? Wow. I'm, I'm going to the printer. going to print it off. and You could have just read it. Wow. This is embarrassing. He's got it. He's got it. Oh, it probably, it probably, you just never took it off the printer. Yeah, it was on the bottom of the stack. Damn. Hello. Why don't you give it to Titus? Well, you don't want to talk. You don't want to talk brackets in basketball. All right, go ahead. <laughs> uh, Wall. This segment is brought to you by Wall. Cutting your hair at home isn't as hard as you think. Give your first DIY haircut the old college try with help from Wall. Wall is the brand used by professionals and has been in business for over 100 years. Being confident in your hairstyle is empowering. Guards aren't just for on the court. See what they did there? The Mm -hmm. Color Pro Cordless Clipper is your styling MVP with an array of easy-to-see attachment guards, ensuring you can easily score the perfect haircut length. Color Pro Cordless is rechargeable and wireless, which allows you... To use the clipper on, uh, to use the clipper on the go or when it's charging, because looking sharp should be a slam dunk. Buy the Wall Cordless Color Pro today. Wall. We now doing we're doing a bracket here. Yeah, so we're gonna start with the first matchup. We're doing uh, your wall shining moment. Mm-hmm. For wall the, shining for, moment. Bad haircut. Bad haircut bracket. bracket. Okay. Right. Yeah. To see who would maybe need wall the most. Okay. Let's and see. This is our first matchup. This is the family region. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, those are two bad haircuts. Yeah. Um <laughs> Yeah. So which one is worse? Uh, uh they they both just scream laziness to me. Uh <laughs> but for different reasons. Different, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Brandon's like, it's time to cut my hair, so let me just I don't know. Just cut it all the exact same. The first insult anybody ever said of me uh, from Barstool was uh, my first video went live, and John Feidelberg said he looks like he cuts his hair with a knife and a fork. (laughs) (laughs) And I do think that's accurate. Uh, But TJ. Yeah, that was just laziness on the other end of the spectrum where I just didn't get a haircut for a year and a half. Did you set out to have long hair? Uh, n- it, it was just laziness. I think Brandon. Never, I think Brandon. Effort. Brandon needs the wall more. Well, Brandon, br- go ahead. Th- I think this is how we settle it. Which of us would be quickest to go back to that haircut right now? Definitely TJ. Definitely right? I would grow TJ, my hair. Yeah. Out. You'd grow your hair. Out. So I would not. So my haircut's worse. Yeah. Yeah. I think. There, if- I think there's a world where TJ does that again. I if you do that again, 
It's a cry for help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what if you swapped haircuts? Who would look – like, would you look good with TJ's haircut? TJ looks like Rosie O'Donnell in yep. A League of Their Own. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I heard, heard that one before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, have you ever had long hair? Have you ever had like shoulder length? So I thought I didn't know if TJ was gonna like dig into the past. I tweeted out a picture a few years ago, and when I was in fifth grade, I had a rat tail. Whoa! Oh, um, yeah. I yeah. had I had Whoa. a little flowing cascade right down the center of the back, and that was it. Uh, my grandfather saw me and made, took me immediately and got my hair cut, and I never grew it out after that. So, um, so yeah, I guess I I you win. You you would you have the the best bad haircut. Wait, does that mean? That's the top half. Does that mean tomorrow we get the we, bottom we, half? Yeah, we got a bottom half. Yeah. We got the bottoms tomorrow. Huh. Huh. So there's three other people in this room. There's the two so, people. Someone didn't make the tournament. Somebody's on the bubble. Yeah. Could it be someone with uh, fantastic hair? That's. <laughs> huh. But who could that be? <laughs> 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 we'll have to wait for tomorrow. I've had a lot of shitty haircuts. I, I did watch a video. I've uh, had a lot of shitty haircuts. I watched a video of you the other day when you had a buzz cut, and I didn't yeah. recognize you. Yeah, there was when I was in college, I basically tried every haircut just because I thought it'd be funny. Um, and it was, I guess. I, I, was, I was purposely sabotaging myself. <laughs> you know it be really funny at the uh, when you're at the age where everyone else is having the most sex they'll ever have in their life is what if I just make myself unfuckable? <laughs> Speaking of unfuckable, Dune 2 review. <laughs> so I saw Dune 2. Um, spoilers? Or are we doing spoilers? Or is I mean, I guess. Break? like I don't, yeah. I'll don't. i be completely honest. That's part one of my notes is I, I, I think I'm incapable of spoiling the movie because I'm not really sure what happened. I'm not smart enough to like really spoil it. Um, I'm not smart enough to know what I actually saw. But my number one thing about Dune 2, I go, I'm, I was so fucking excited for the movie. I got there like an hour early. Uh, I, I am very much a uh, movie hype guy. I, I, I'm not this way with a lot of things, um, but I become a, I'm, I'm a movie hype guy. If there's a ton of hype around the, I did the uh, Oppenheimer Barbie double feature. If there is hype around movies, I will go to the theater. I'll be very excited about it, even if I'm not someone who fully understands the, uh, the Dune sure. world and all that sort of shit. So I get there early. And I say, we got to go to the concession stand because, as you guys pointed out, the, the Dune popcorn thing, um, they're selling out. So I was like, I got to get there early. I got to go get my Dune popcorn uh, so that way I can fuck the Dune popcorn bucket, right? That's what we're all here That's for. why you That's went. why we're here. We're here to fuck the Dune popcorn bucket. Right. The Dunussy. Uh, so I... <laughs> What's your... T the Dunussy. The, the Dunussy. <laughs> So I uh, I get there like an hour before showtime, walk straight to the concession stand, and I say, get, I, I, I slap some cash on the table. I didn't actually do that, but I say, I need some Dune popcorn. Give me the Dune popcorn. Um, if it's not in the Dune bucket, I send it back. Give me the Dune bucket. I need the Dune popcorn. They did. They gave me the Dune bucket, but my question, Connor, how am I supposed to fuck this thing? <laughs> Look how big that is. You need some girth? This is the Dune bucket they gave me. I hadn't seen that one, actually. I'm shocked that they gave you that one. It's a good bucket. It is very nice. It's but good, it's, it's not a, fuckable at all. I tried all weekend to fuck this thing. And I, uh, what am I supposed to do with this? I don't know. My wife's had four kids. That looks right to me. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Care to uh, use the same uh, verbiage you used on Genie Bus? <laughs> <laughs> care to? Uh, it was such a compliment for Genie Bus. You care to? Uh, oh, I don't. Yeah, I've been running through my wife for years. <laughs> 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 Not that big of a deal. Uh, yeah, so disappointment out of the gate. They handed me the bucket, and I was like, I don't know how I'm going to fuck this, uh, but I'll try. Uh, and I go home, and it just wasn't working for me. So I don't know what – why Why would they have another bucket? Why wouldn't they just simply say we're out of the bucket? I didn't realize there was a different bucket, so um, there was that. I mean, clearly it is a – like they put a lot of effort into that bucket. Yeah. That's a huge bucket. A huge bucket, dude, a lot of popcorn. Yeah. I it, it, was too, it was too much popcorn. <laughs> too much popcorn. It's a long movie. Um, oh, maybe you were supposed to fuck the popcorn. Was I supposed to fuck the cup? Oh, sh that's a nice cup, dude. I tried to. I got the. You I can't got, fuck that cup either. Hold on, let me see. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, you can. <laughs> that, that hole is it's perfect for me. Um, so there was that. What other notes did I write down? Uh, this isn't a spoiler, but it is something that happened in the movie. Um, and I texted you this, and, and Connor, you had an objection. Zendaya? Zendaya? How do you say her name? Zendaya. Zendaya. Um, she looked like she had to take a shit the entire movie. <laughs> I, I, does I, she suck at acting? No, I, I watched it again last night with that thought in my head. Okay, does she actually look like she has to take a shit? I didn't see what you were talking oh, about. Oh, dude, she's making a face like she's got a shit uh, the whole movie. <laughs> I can't find a toilet. She's just... <sighs> <laughs> That's her the whole movie, just like that's how, That's pretty accurate though. I mean that's how I look when I need to shit. <laughs> I was like, get this woman a toilet. She's she's got a shit. Uh so I, I wrote that down. Um I felt like visually it was awesome. I, I love the movie. It was a, I walked out of the movie and I was like, that movie fucking rocked and I have no I, I kinda hated it at the same time. What? I I hated it because uh I don't want to spoil it. I don't I don't actually want to spoil it. But um I don't know. It's it's just like what nothing. The, the the plot is is lacking, but the visuals are incredible. And uh, so, and I don't fully understand the nose thing because it's like to breathe during the spice, but also your mouth is exposed. So like, what what's that about? Like, so there's just no mouth breathers. What do the mouth breathers on on this planet do? Yeah, I don't know. I'm there, not. There are probably a lot of mouth breathers too. So I I don't know. It just. Um, I, I liked it, though. I, I can't wait for Dune 3. I, I, I legitimately was very excited for the movie. Uh, it took me like an hour and a half to remember what the fuck was going on. Um, and there was a villain. Okay, this is a spoiler. This is definitely a spoiler. So if you're a spoiler person, tune out now. Um, the fucking villain they build up, he, 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 he's gone. He just kills him. The Baron? The, 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 the other guy, the, the new Baron. The, oh, Faye Rotha? Yeah. I thought that was incredible. But what do we? What we're, we're arguing, what are we? You know, just, just stop! 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 You're entering an argument with an absolute nerd about this shit. Yeah. So any question you ask, he's gonna be like, "That guy? That was crazy. that guy's that was the awesome. best." Yeah. Yeah. But the I thought you're you're you should be setting that up for Dune Three. No, no. The, the the big fight should be there should be a cliffhanger that like going into what what am I excited about Dune Three now for? If we are getting into spoilers, Dune Three. I believe is going to be about Paul's sister once his sister is born and Anya Taylor Joy just comes in and fucks. Yeah, but they up. didn't they didn't do a good job of forecasting that in Dune too. Like Ooh, I, didn't, I don't I know. Didn't, I I know that Dune. I, okay, all right. I because they were setting the the tone the entire movie how the sister is talking to them and right. You know, but, the but, but it's is not on clear. His side, but then once she comes out the womb, I think it's going to be totally different. Right, but they don't. They didn't set that up that it was totally. Then let's have that moment where it's like, oh, it's hinting at she's going to. But, but like, I left the theater and I was like, that was fucking awesome. But like, you, you're telling me that the tr the the other tribes are coming to invade for Dune Three. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about these other tribes. I don't. Yeah. I don't know if we should fear them or not. Yeah. But I feared the Austin Butler guy. And I was like, this is gonna get good. Dune Three is gonna be awesome. It's gonna be this Austin Butler guy versus. And then he kills him right away. He just kills him. There was never really a threat. It's a good fight though. It was a good fight. Um, Very fun. And Brandon's bored. Sorry, Brandon's bored. Uh, all right. That was Austin it. Butler Elvis? Yes. Yeah, he was Elvis. Did he play Elvis in Dune? And it, and it ruined yeah. his voice com like permanently. He played. Oh, El I he learned how to talk like Elvis for two years, and now his voice is just permanently completely different. Yeah. But why build him up just to kill him? Build him up to. It's based on a book. To carry him into the. That's the other thing is I felt like the books were better. <laughs> I felt like I was watching the movie and I was like, the, the books are so much better than the than the movie. Um. Yeah, and that that disappointed me. What did you think about Christopher Walken? A lot of people had takes on him. Yeah, it took me out a little bit, but <laughs> he he's a legend. But uh, he can't not be Christopher Walken. Yeah, exactly. Like he's just crazy. Yeah, I didn't think like that's the emperor or whatever his role is in the movie. I was like, that's just Christopher Walken. Yeah, I just got FOMO here because I tried to watch Dune last week and I just couldn't. I got about halfway through and I was like, Ugh. yeah, it's just not for me. And I, and and I want to watch Dune too because they everybody Dune's says it's better. Me. Dune's not for me either, but I love it. Yeah. Dune two, I think, is leaps and bounds better than Dune one. I have a very quick conversation about not for me, okay? This has nothing to do with Dune. I ordered the UFC fight on uh, Saturday night, and I have tried, and I have tried, and I have tried, and I've watched UFC fights. I just can't make it for me. I can't. No, it's not I, for me either. I, I can't. I, 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 I spent 80 bucks on that fight the other night, and, and, like, I don't know. Something about it just doesn't grab me and make me want to care about it from a event-to-event -event standpoint. 
Completely agree. That's me too. I'm, I'm not a hater, and I'm not like I'm not a hater. If you're into UFC, you're a weirdo. You're not. Yeah. It's just I personally, I will watch. I'll watch UFC fights if I go to someone's house and they bought the fight or something. Yeah. Um, but I don't. It's not for me. But Dana White did give me twenty thousand dollars. So. Yeah, he did. <laughs> I take all that back. <laughs> Love you, Uncle Dana. What a stupid uh, <laughs> sentence that was. <laughs> No, I earned that money, dude. <laughs> by stand, and I'm joking. By I didn't actually. I can I can I be honest with you? I didn't actually get any money. I didn't actually get any money. It was all a joke. It was all just for content, and and I I didn't actually get any. I got zero dollars. Every morning when I show up, you pull out a wad, and you're like, "What's up, bitch?" Yeah, but I I didn't actually. He didn't actually give me any money. So, uh, yeah, I think that that's my review. Is like Dune Two was awesome. It was great. I loved it. Can't wait for Dune Three. But I'm also not a Dune guy. I realize that I fist pump zero times. Oh, and that's a okay. that's a you know that's when I realized yeah. like this. Movie How many times you fist pump? Probably like three and a half. <laughs> Dude, I I fist bump in Star Wars sometimes. I'd love to hear that. Like it's not even yeah. a nerd thing. Like I I am into sci-fi sometimes. <laughs> did you hear I his answer? Did. Yeah, I did. I was. Three and a half. What's a half fist bump? Uh, the the scene where Zendaya and Timothy Th- Timothy Chalamet they first kiss. I was like, fuck yeah. You have. That was look, like look, a, look, I I thought that was a fair answer. There's your. Fuck yeah. yeah. Mm. And this was the, this was me and uh, Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hua. <Hoo-ah! laughs> and then there's, uh, there's but just then there's the uh, then there's the like the the Kobe. Yeah, exactly. That's what I did when Zendaya and Timothy or Chalamet Tiger Tiger hits a hits a putt that's like. It's, it's not. It's like not the. 12, it's yeah. not the big putt on eighteen or seventeen. It's like on twelve. Yeah. Just keep the momentum going. He's just. Like, he saves par. Yeah. 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 TJ, did you have those the moments? Half fist bump. Yeah, I thought it was fucking sick. How yeah. many fist bumps? <sighs> Probably like three and a half. Yeah. Javier Bardem's doing tricks on it though. Yeah. Like, he was he's doing great. Tricks on it. He was he's so. Doing so naive. He's he doing so tricks good. on it. I mean, that's that was. You can make the case he was the best character in the movie. It was I think I think it's Faye Rotha, but I don't know who Faye Rotha is. Austin, Austin Butler. Butler. Okay, you got to use their. It's you use Austin. Oh, there's Dune on TikTok. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Every time Austin yeah. Butler talks. What? Uh, it's Austin. What? So what's Timothy Chalamet's character's name? Because he has a thousand names. Paul Atreides. Paul Atreides. Muad'Dib. Uh, Lisan Al Gaib. Also, yeah, Lisan Al Gaib. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. Um, it's like, how how are you supposed to follow Usul. this shit? How are you supposed to follow this shit? That's just, yeah. You're making up new languages, and you're giving guys like multiple names. Uh, th- that's stick why with one name. Seeing it a second time, it did help. Yeah, you would hate it. Also, they you call would, him Ma- Maudi. You would hate it, Brandon. The guy's name Paul. Paul, straightforward, I, obvious. It's I Paul. Hate, I hate how happy it makes him. It's Paul. It's a great movie. You're watching the movie, and you're like, "Thank fucking God, it's Paul." I can yeah. remember Paul. Paul's easy. And then throughout the whole movie, they start calling him what? Muadib. Yeah. Lisan Al Gaib. Lisan Al Gaib. And you're like, "We're just fucking calling Paul, dude." All right, brains out. Uh, <laughs> Let's unbox that uh, box. Oh yeah, I got a box. You want to unbox the box? Yeah. Let's, let's unbox a box. By the way, we got a little pile going over here for uh, oh opening day. Take it to him. What do we got here? Because it's going on his side. Oh. 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 A little Jägermeister. A little tap action. A Jägermeister. Single tap. Single taps. All I got these days. Also, if they would like to send another one of these, I would love one for my apartment. That was shameless. <laughs> nice. Oh, they really got that thing styrofoamed up. That's probably important. Yep. <laughs> That's probably the cords and whatnot. Let's go. Oh, this is good. All right, we awesome. have our. So we're gonna have Jägermeister on tap. Yeah, cold, chill. Got to be cold. Yeah, zero degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> like, look at that thing. Look at that. Look at that bad boy. Hell yeah. There you go. We'll have that on Friday. Messed that up. Shout out to Jägermeister, new presenting sponsor of Mostly Sports. That's incredible. Incredible. Um, all right, that's the show. Fun show. Uh, we will be back tomorrow. Thank you to Jägermeister. And uh, thank you to Tate. And who else do we thank? Do you want to thank anybody? It's Oscars. It's Oscar season. 
What would your What would your uh, acceptance speech be? Would you be like? I would be the. I, I think I'd do Joe like, Pesci. Fuck you, my third grade teacher. You said this would never happen. Uh, no, 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 no. Would my third do? grade teacher, Miss Friend, was wonderful. She was a wonderful woman. My fifth grade teacher, Miss Edwards, who's dead now. Fuck her. Yeah, would you? She was the fucking worst. Would you do that if you won? No, I'd go. I'd go you? piss on. I'd, I'd go double birds their grave and just. <laughs> Uh, gritty, <laughs> gritty on my fifth grade teacher. <laughs> Would you? Uh, there was a guy who took the opportunity to like shout out the little guys, and he was like, "There are a bunch of guys like me out there that just need an opportunity. Give them an opportunity." Yeah. Um, I would probably my speech would probably just be classy as fuck. I'd just <laughs> probably be like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Classy, a little funny, probably. I'd, yeah, I'd probably, I'd I'd hit all the right notes and just like have everybody talking about how great that speech. Have you ever was. seen Joe Pesci's first speech? When he won an Oscar, no. Yeah, it's. I think it's the best of all time. What What was the? Um, he walks up there. They give him the award. He turns to the mic and says, "I think." Uh, uh, he says, "It's an honor. Thanks." And walks off. Oh, that's great. And that was it. Yeah. So that's I Joe Pesci it. I think. Yeah. All right. All right. See you guys tomorrow. That's how ball is done.